Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of my Ability System series. First off, I want to apologize for the long break in between the last and this video, but I've been on vacation and now I'm back and ready to continue on with this series. Also, I have to tell you that I just yesterday installed the latest engine version, which is 4.16.2, and we will continue with the Ability System using this version, so make sure to install that and upgrade your project. By the way, if you don't know how upgrading your project to another engine version works. It's just as simple as uninstalling the engine version you had before, installing the new one, then double click whatever project you want to upgrade and you will be asked to select an Unreal Engine version. Then you just choose the 4.16 and hit OK and it will upgrade automatically. So if you follow along, please do that with your ability project now and I will see you once it's done. All right, here we are in Unreal Engine. And the first thing you should do after upgrading your project is to check for any issues that might appear. So I've looked through a couple of blueprints and the only issue I have found so far is in the master enemies. So let's open up the blueprint of that. And if we compile, we have an error here with the get random reachable point in radius. So let's click that. And apparently that function was somehow updated. So to fix it, you just search for get random reachable point in radius. Connect the starting to the origin and the petrol radius to the radius here. Remove the old one and plug in the random location for our destination. Then you can compile and the arrow should disappear, right? Then we can close our master enemy. What we are going to do in this episode is refine our missile skill and fix a couple of bugs that we haven't dealt with so far. So the first bug is that in our blueprints folder, our BP magic projectile is set to block all dynamic. That means that if we shoot a missile at an enemy, which is hidden behind another enemy, our missile would collide with the first one and just stop moving without dealing any damage. In order to fix that, what you want to do is uncheck the simulation generate hit events, check the generate overlap events, and we will set the collision presets to overlap all dynamic instead. Right? This also means that we can't use our on component hit event anymore, so we need to use on component begin overlap as an event for that. Let's move that up here and remove the old on component hit. Then we will plug in the other actor for our double equal and hook up the execution. Now you might think that this should already be working, but if we play test and use our ability, you will see strange behavior because it just deals damage without flying to the enemy and explodes instantly. The reason why this is happening is because in our master enemy, if we open that up, in the viewport, you will see that we've got our widget visibility sphere, which has a radius of 1500, so it's extremely large. And our magic projectile is instantly overlapping this component and is therefore destroyed. Instead, what we want to do is check whether we overlap the capsule component, not the visibility sphere. So in order to do that, let's go back to a magic projectile and we need to add an end condition to our branch. Then plug in the end to the condition. Let's maybe add a little bit of room here. So we need to check that the other actor is the target and we want to check that the class of the component that we hit, so get the class equals capsule component. Plug that in for the end. All right, if you're using a sphere collision for your enemy instead, you will just search for sphere collision here. Okay, so if we play now and hit F8, we will cast a spell, flies to the enemy, explodes and deals damage. All right, so this is working perfectly fine. Another issue that might appear is if we play and cast a spell, then select something else, it will switch the target. Or if we select nothing, it will just stay in mid-air and won't do anything at all. So 
the reason why this is happening is because if we go to our skill actors and the skill missile we see that when we try to cast a spell we check whether we have a valid enemy and then when we hit our notify we get the enemy the selected enemy again and during that time this could change or not be valid anymore because we have our casting time but the fix is very simple so just before we initialize the spell cast we grab our selected enemy promote that to a variable which is called selected enemy which is now stored in the missile and now we can go ahead and look for our event on scale notify and instead of getting the selected enemy from our, from our player we get our own variable and hook that up to the target also in the event on spellcast we set actor rotation so all, we can also replace our selected enemy there and feed that into the get actor location then remove the old one and this should work fine now so if we play select the spider here hit f8 and then select another one we will still hit the one we aimed at when we casted our spell all right finally there is one more issue that i wanted to show you so let's go to our skill arcane ball just for debugging purposes we will lower the cooldown to zero seconds and the casting time to 0.1 seconds reduce the mana cost of this to let's say 10 and set the damage to something 70 then play and just spam our arcane ball you will see that once our enemy died there were still missiles that were launching towards it and they will now just hover in midair and they have no idea what they are supposed to do so what we need to do is destroy all the missiles aimed at a certain enemy when it's dead first off let's go back to our skill missile to the event on skill notify get our selected enemy check whether is dead is false and only if it's false we want to spawn our magic projectile so this here is just used for the case that we started casting when the enemy was alive and once we hit the skill notify it was dead so in this case we would no longer spawn our magic projectile but we still need to destroy those that are currently in the air when the enemy died to do that let's close our skill missile and close the arcane ball then go to our master enemy to the event graph because here we want to add a new function called destroy active missiles and what this will simply do is get every missile so all actors of class class will be magic projectile and then we have to run it for each loop and for every missile or for every projectile that is currently spawned we need to get its target and check whether that is valid If it's not valid we can just ignore it but if it is we want to check whether this equals our cells add a branch connect it to the is valid and if that is true so our target is valid and it is our self we need to destroy the array element and then once this loop is completed we can simply return pile and save now we also need to call that once we've died so let's go to the event graph and here here's the on death event and maybe after we set the is dead boolean we need to destroy the active missiles All right so let's compile and save this play test and i will hit F8 multiple times and see all of them were destroyed when our enemy died okay so that's it for fixing all of the issues with our current missile spell 
Another thing that is not working currently is canceling the missile command. So when you're not in range of the character, you will walk towards it and currently you're not able to stop that movement by clicking somewhere else or hitting WASD. To fix that, we just need to go into our skill player controller, it should be in blueprints. Yep, here it is. And add another function called cancel missile. In here we get our missile spell, check whether this is valid. If it's not, we can just ignore it or return. But if it is valid, we want to get our control char. So I'll play a character, then get the movement component, get character movement, and we want to stop movement immediately. All right. Another thing we want to do is grab our missile, so just copy that over and stop its timer. After we've done this, we can just return. Okay. Now we need to integrate that cancel missile function in our movement events. So let's go to the event graph. And somewhere here there should be the input axis move forward. So here we check whether the axis value is not equal to zero. And if that's true, we will cancel the missile command and then check with whether we have mouse movement command And do the same thing for input axis move right. So cancel missile and plug that in right after the first branch, connect it to the second branch and then we'll line it up. Compile and save. But we should keep in mind that there's also another way to move and that is just left clicking somewhere. So let's go to our input action left click. And if we hit a selectable, we want to cancel a missile right away. But if it's not a selectable, so we want to move somewhere. Let's also add some space here. Then we also want to cancel our missile before we cancel the movement command. Right, compile and save. If we play now, select an enemy, let's go far away, then I will hit F8 character moves towards it, I hit W, A, S, or D, and it was cancelled, or I can hit F8, click somewhere else, and we move there. Alright, that's it for this episode. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.